you know my next guest, Marcus Lonis, as the host of The Profit, which is one of the great real-life business shows. And by the way, the premiere next Tuesday kicks it off on CNBC. But he wears many hats. He's also the CEO of Camping World. Now, two weeks ago, we got a call from Scott in Florida asking about Camping World stock. He was saying, how come it's been so weak lately? So this is a terrific opportunity to check in with Mr. Lamonis, find out about the 53% decline year-to-date in the shares of CWH, which sells new and used RVs, along with various related accessories and services. Now, there were concerns expressed by analysts on the conference call about inventory issues, in really in the industry, just so you know, as well as questions regarding a recent acquisition of outdoor sports company Gander Mountain. So has the stock of the camping world been punished enough? Could it be ready to bottom as we saw a rally today up 7.57%? Or we need maybe to be cautious here. Let's check in with Marcus Lamontis, the chairman and CEO of Camping World, find out more about his business and its prospects. Mr. Lamontis, welcome to Man Money. Good to have you, Hello, Marcus. Everybody. Thank you. Congratulations on your, all your success. Thank I can't you. wait for the show. The show, like Shark Tank, makes me feel like if my kids watch it, they learn how to be business people. We're trying. Now, you had a conference today, and the stock was up big, so I, that's more current than the analyst call. So why don't you fill us in on how, how you're feeling and what you told people? Well, you know, we, we think that, that in being a public company, there's a big transition from being private. And I would say that I've really learned, made some rookie mistakes in how to communicate to the market about strategies. And I think that's probably the biggest learning curve. We are the category killer in the right. space. And we've built a moat around it, all really relating to the ownership of a database called the Good Sam Club. And that's really how we make our money. And then we do that. We acquire new customers and we find new people through the sale of RVs and the other products. And I think that's different for people than people thought it was. Now, before we get to the nitty gritty, uh, a lot of insider buying in the stock. You, uh, another person who bought uh, $500,000, you typically don't see that unless you kind of feel that longer term, things have been okay. Yeah, so I sold some shares not too long ago. I, I don't know, four or five months ago, I sold 130,000 shares at a price higher than this. I chose to buy shares back because I don't agree with the value. But one thing that I did have to do is I had to write a check to the company. I had to disgorge the profits. I think almost $600,000 I had to write a check back. I believe in what we're doing. You know, I have 35 million shares. Right. Uh, and so that's a significant amount. Don't take a salary from the company. Don't have options. Don't have restricted shares. And so I want people to know how confident I am in what we're doing by taking money out of my pocket and buying the shares. Now, you were... Uh almost reluctant to be apologetic about an issue that Thor, which is a huge maker of RVs, did the very night, which but there was some weather that made it so sales were tougher. Part of the reason, Jim, that I try never to discuss weather is I don't want the guys in the field using that as an excuse, okay, right? I'm a, we got warriors in the field. We need them selling. Right. Weather was definitely an issue in April. I mean, it was definitely an issue. Yes, we always have January, February weather, but it leaked over. We saw a pretty decent bounce back in May, though. But you've also said you've been in this business for a long time, and you have ups and downs, and you can't think of it on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. This is a long-term strategy, right. right? My goal is how do we grow the company, how do we grow earnings, and how do we grow the file size? That's the key. Now, on the conference call, you uh, cursed. You said that the D's, you're, you're, whoa, you, 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 we basically talked about your distribution center and you're saying that it was a different yeah. kind of show yeah. than the yeah. kind of show that you put on or yeah. I put on. Yeah. Uh, Clear it up? It did clear up. And I think what happened was people originally thought that we bought Gander Mountain to get into the big box retail business. Right. That's totally true. It's false. Okay. We disclosed today at the Baird Conference in a public environment our real strategy behind the acquisition of Gander. It was our backdoor entry into the market in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Indiana, Illinois, Pennsylvania, and Texas, where we're going to be putting RVs in most of those locations. So it's not, just, it's not a gun play, which I know some are no. worried about. In fact, it's, it's, yes, we sell firearms, right. we sell hunting firearms, but it is always and will always be an RV play. That is our business. And what we, what we do to grow our business, Jim, is we grow our file, our good Sam file. Right. And that's just another way to do it. Now, uh, in terms of things that you said, uh, you know, that you might disguise as rookie mistakes, yeah. I, there was a filing which talked about uh, uh, at 10K, the company concluded that its internal controls, you guys, not the e what you guys con uh, said your internal control over financial reporting was not as effective. So that's something you brought up. You didn't necessarily think have to, but you, know, you did. The, you know, there's, there's we want to, I operate with full disclosure, and right. if you listen to the conference call, I want to say everything. <laughs> You're a little candid, my friend. I, I want to I say everything so that I'm never accused of hiding anything. Sure don't. Let the good news, let the bad news li live as it lives. We had a delay in our 10K. Right. Uh, there were some internal control issues. 
We ended up resolving them with the auditors by putting better systems in place. Uh, and, you know, auditors are difficult. You want to get the right price. You want to get good service. Yeah, so you and did change auditors. We did change auditors, and it's, it's uh, 13 years we had them. Love mm -hmm. them to death. But when price and service don't match up, and then you're going to make a good business. Absolutely. Change. But no disagreements with no, the No, but that's so absolutely that's People should know that, that, that no audits cost a fortune. Yeah. Now, uh, we haven't talked enough about the actual business. Uh, yep. People like my daughter who they glamp and they love RVs yep. and just what we would call the secular trend of buyers. Who's in your stores? What kind of people? So there's this notion that you know, historically that older people buy RVs. What I think Thor and companies like Thor and Forest River did very well at the end of 2008 and 9, when the gas crisis right. happened, they woke up and said, if we want to expand the funnel, we want to grow the market, right. we have to make smaller units, single axles, lighter units. Bob Martin of Thor was... Which I, we, we know we love. What I think was one of the brightest guys in saying, I want to get ahead of that curve. Yes, I want to make motorhomes, but I want to get to the top of the funnel where it's the widest. We follow that same trend. We sell more travel trailers than we do anything else, okay. and we really have seen this, this funnel widen. That's why it went from 300000 to 500000 because the, it became more accessible to a Honda Accord driver. Well, to me, uh, buyer shares, other buyers, uh, stocks come down a great deal. You gave a presentation people love. You were candid enough to say, listen, the story wasn't being told right. Like, for instance, Gander. Yeah. That's a great reason to buy Gander. Well, you know, we have 130 RV dealerships right. today. At the end of 2019, we'll have 165, 160 to 165. That's 20 percent growth. We're making acquisitions. And by the way, our EBITDA is pretty, yes, pretty solid. Yes, it is. Okay, that's Marcus Limonis, Chairman and CEO of Camping World. Don't forget, next Tuesday, the premiere. And you just heard a very candid fellow. And if you think there's anything hidden, go read the conference calls. This is a man who tells all. Man Money is back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.